Hello, my friends at the UU. Hello, Door County. We'll, we'll see you soon. Janet and I will be up soon. Just want to say hello to some special friends. Uh, Tom Torp, uh, Nancy Rafal, who's uh, South Nest. We have, uh, we've nested at many times in the past. Uh, Alessandra, wonderful poet up in Washington Island. Jared Santek from right on Door County. A lot of friends up there. And Alan and Char, our neighbors on Sunset Lane in Egg Harbor. So here are a handful of poems I wrote. Think of this reading as a coffee break. Long enough to sip, smell, feel, imagine, and maybe get a little warm up before it's time to say, see you later. I'm wearing, by the way, my Door Karma t-shirt that my wife just bought me and my Door Hatch distillery. So I am representing. I'd like to start with a poem uh, called John Cain. It's from my first book. And John, I encourage anybody uh, who, loves, uh, who loves painting uh, and especially primitivist art uh, to take a look at John Cain, who was a, who was a laborer uh, and discovered very late in life uh, as a, as a self-taught artist in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, originally from Scotland. John Kane. This is a true story about the immigrant Kane, how a hundred years ago in Pittsburgh, he painted boxcars black in the filthy car yards of the Baltimore and Ohio, one after another until lunchtime. On his break, he'd mix up brighter colors. One side of the next boxcar would be his wide steel canvas. In the plain style, high as he could reach with the green brush, he'd make hills grow up, dreaming always of Scotland. Up a stepladder, he'd climb to have the sky a field of pure blue and clouds floating away above the highland. Down on earth, he put two small girls beside a river, a red maple, and the words, John Kane, just as the whistle blew. At one o'clock, he'd start to cover his work with black paint. John Cain had a hard life as an immigrant. Uh, he lost a leg on the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. He had a drinking problem. He left his family for 20 years and suddenly came back. And they welcomed him. His wife welcomed him as if only a minute had passed. And with, even with that, in spite of that difficult life, he said, when interviewed at the end of it, he said, I have never reached the point where I failed to see beauty that is everywhere about. And that, that, that's our work as human beings, as, as, we, as we navigate this experience of being alive. So here's a poem that, uh, that kind of uh, uh, represents my uh, uh, conception of what it, of what we do when we make poems or paintings. We make little abstractions using our imagination from the world at large. So in, in a certain way, we're miniaturists. This poem is called The Miniaturist. I make tiny, tiny huts. The hills too are tiny. Small hills, small trees, a silver river, a forge with smoke, and a little blue water tower. To work on such a minute scale, I use magnifying lenses, jeweler's goggles, sometimes even the instruments of microsurgery. 
Perhaps you have seen some of my pieces. The son of Copernicus, the Ferris wheel, the funeral parlor, how difficult it was to glue the green bottle fly onto the right index finger of the corpse. Or the one for which I am famous, the lovers of late afternoon, her hair falling back, the red at the tip of his ear, the universe of heated molecules just above their bodies. I must have been, this was in the 1990s, but I still must have been, I felt like the last person on earth to discover Buddy Holly uh, in, my, uh, in my late 20s. <coughs> Excuse me. The Buddy Holly poem. It's so easy when you realize that all the squirrels on the shingled rooftops of Milwaukee are Buddha, that all trees shake green in the wind, that the moon is you. Sing that the whole of every note is individual and one, that love is free every day on the blue earth. Listen to me. I had a student once who was quite adamant, dogmatic about the fact that we should never use metaphor in poetry. And I thought, oh my, you'll put me out of business. Uh, associative thinking is my wheelhouse. So I tried to write a poem uh, that was against metaphor, but you'll see by the end, I completely backtrack and, um, very associative. This poem looks at the, the Calatrava addition to the Milwaukee Art Museum. Santiago Calatrava is a, <coughs> is a Valencian Spanish architect whose work is very in the Spanish style, uh, uh, associative and metaf uh, metaphorical. So that the Calatrava, if you don't know it, look at it. It, it, uh, when the fins go up, it looks like a bird. Sometimes it looks like a ship. Sometimes it feels like you're in the belly of a whale. Against metaphor for Santiago Calatrava. Chair is not minesweeper, chives not timpani, sweet potatoes not chimes. <clears throat> Tortoise shell in heat, not the port of Milwaukee at quitting time. I, not the grandson of Carlos Guevara Moreno. Frame, not Bolivia with lavender mountains. Barrel hoop, not the acrobatic girl with pinned braids. Dark moth on the kitchen window sill, not syllable of Julia de Burgos. Walt Whitman, not Esprit d'Escalier, Rana, not memory of birth, not turning torso, clarinet with reed, not dolphin in underwater cavern. Poems, not iron lung, not kidney transplantation, not faith healing. Truth, not unpainted back door, half open near Cooper's Rock, West Virginia. Ground squirrel, not swallow, not dry axle. Six and 496, not perfect pitch. Beads of rainwater rolling down pale leaves of broccoli, not ellipsis. How then should I explain to you the undetonated woman at once on the banks of Lake Michigan and Texcoco, who is my sailing ship and white bird and kiss and blowing weepil embroidered with orange 
and line threads against metaphor. You know, it's summertime. <clears throat> We're in a heat spell. Uh, and I always like to, uh, as, a, uh, uh, as somebody who has taught uh, during the school year and written uh, or uh, been able to enjoy some leisure time during the summer, summer always feels like an opportunity, like a blank canvas. Like, what will I do this summer? Uh, and it gives us that opportunity to, uh, to daydream about our plans and our aspirations. So this one is called, If You Could This Summer. Who would you kiss? If you could this summer, who would you kiss? If you could this summer, where would you go? Inside a watery mosque, tiny as row. If you could this summer rain, how would you scroll? Lizard feet cross a windshield, branch as they roll. If you could this summer, what would you learn? To sing through veins of vowels as they burn. If you could this summer, tell me, who would you kiss? The green woman in the maze who flowers like this. And finally, river spirits. Many years ago now, uh, taking a, a walk with my wife and my two young sons, and the littlest one had a tremendous imagination. Uh, and this poem, uh, this poem dramatizes what he told me he saw. At the same time, they had discovered near, in southwestern Pennsylvania, near Pittsburgh, uh, uh, an indigenous site, archaeologists had found it, and uh, that site was uh, identified as the Monongahela people. Uh, And they uh, and the site was probably about 500 years ago. This was in the 19, late 1990s or early aughts. River spirits. When animals were no longer people, I was walking with my young sons along the river of the sliding banks. Thick plugs of wild asparagus were pushing up through the earth. And in the darkness of the forest, thousands of white flowers pricked our eyes like stars. My little one was kneeling in the mulch and pine brushes, pulling back the green vertebrae of a fern. Suddenly he called out. I thought perhaps he'd found fox scat or a white spider until we crouched beside him and saw the Monongahela village. Dwelling stretched the length of a finger, wattled walls and matted roofs. Hunters in buckskin huddled around a stone and we could smell the gray thread of burning tobacco. A line of waterfowl was flying north over the village, not far from the orange cooking fire. Under the widest part of the fern, the older children and five women were hunkering or bent in the garden, laughing and weeding around the goosefoot, the green pumpkins, the bright sunflowers, taller than the old storytelling man drinking from a gourd. I am finished, he said. It is the end.